Hello, I'm Alex Davies, founder of Wealth Club. Today I'm with Will Gibbs of Octopus Ventures to talk about the Octopus Titan VCT. Will, tell me about Octopus Titan. Certainly. So Octopus Titan VCT is the largest VCT in the market. So it has just over £825 million under management and has about 19,000 investors within Titan. In terms of what Titan actually looks to do for investors, so Titan invests in a portfolio of high growth UK based technology companies where we believe we could make 10, 20, 30 times our money on these really high growth companies if they're successful. And across a portfolio now of over 70 plus companies, we'd hope that that performance across the portfolio will then translate to an individual shareholder return of about 5p a year, uh, regular dividend plus special dividend. So all of it comes down to the growth of that underlying portfolio of high growth companies. Before we talk about the companies you invest in, um, give me some background about Octopus Ventures and um, your role there? So within the team there's about 35 of us in Octopus Ventures uh, based between London and New York but the headquarters uh, is in London and in terms of the genesis of the team so we started off first really as an angel investor an angel investing group uh, and then have morphed and, and gradually kind of grown into now one of the largest institutional investors in Europe. So we manage about £1.2 billion pounds, um, and have had the privilege to back some of the most successful technology companies coming out of Europe. So the likes of SwiftKey, which we sold to Microsoft, companies like EV, which we sold to Amazon, and companies like Zoopla, which IPO'd on the London Stock Exchange. Um, and actually in terms of the team and the background, so there is a strong entrepreneurial background and flair which I think is really important for investing into these types of companies but there isn't really one single pattern in background so we've got I think four PhDs in the team uh, we've got ex accountants ex hedge fund traders uh, and that breadth for us really means that we can look at a diverse number of opportunities with very different questions uh, and interests in terms of my background, I've been part of the team for coming up to seven years. Uh, before that, I was an entrepreneur myself, and currently my most of my time is spent looking after nine of our portfolio companies, as well as coordinating all of our new investments into the health sector. What do you mean when you say you were an entrepreneur? Uh, so I've done a, a bunch of things uh, before Octopus, but I had a organic spirits business based in Essex, uh, which we grew and then I left that business uh, to join Octopus. So what sort of companies are you investing in? And if I invest today, yeah, what's, where, where will my money go? So our number one criteria we look for is, is this business pioneering? And for us, we're really looking for businesses that can fundamentally change markets or create entirely new markets. And so that pioneering test is something that's very front of mind. We also look for very strong revenue growth rates. So typically companies growing at one, two, three, four hundred percent year on year, which is a very specific type of company. We're also looking for strong entrepreneurial background and calibre. So one of our most recent investments is into a company called Kazoo, which is the next business from Alex Chesterman, the ex-CEO um, of Zoopla, which he took from zero to being worth 2.4 billion. And this is his next business aimed in the second-hand car market. And so for us, backing serial entrepreneurs is also really exciting for us because these are teams that have been there and done it before. And Alex is probably one of the most high-caliber entrepreneurs in Europe. So for us, just to recap, it is pioneering companies, strong growth potential uh, and calibre of team. So you mentioned Kazoo, what other new investments have you made? I think one company that, that really speaks to the type of asset that Titan looks to invest into is a company called Bought by Many. So this company operates in the insurance space. It is now the UK's fastest growing pet insurer and unlike many other legacy insurers that haven't really innovated uh, in a meaningful way over the last five, ten years, Bought by Many has looked to build an insurer from the ground up. So with a very strong team, with strong credentials in the insurance and financial services market, has now built a business that puts the customer at the centre. And so unlike other insurers, they acquire new customers through digital channels, through social media, and I think now they have about 9,000 five-star reviews on their website, which is unlike any other uh, 
pet, pet insurer. I think they also innovate in other areas. So they've partnered with a company called First Vet, which means that unlike many other insurers where if you have a problem with your pet, you have to go and see a vet, you can actually use telehealth. So actually video conferencing with a pet, which is now becoming far more common in human health, but actually trying to transplant some of that innovation we're seeing elsewhere into what is a, a pretty stagnant industry otherwise. Okay, and any other examples of recent investments? Yeah, so we're also um, very excited to be an investor in LV, which is a business operating in the female health space. And so their latest product is a silent breast pump. And if you compare that to a lot of the other incumbent and, and legacy products where there's low innovation and definitely doesn't make the customer feel valued um, or, or kind of special, this is a business that has looked to build a silent breast pump and really break down the taboos associated with motherhood and, and female health. And so by making really strong statements with, um, with how it's fine actually to pump milk in, in public and they have customers actually sharing pictures and have built a very loyal following. I think in the US they have about 45,000 people on their waiting list. And so for us it's a really great situation where demand for the product is huge and it's a matter of funding that business to fulfill that demand. I think another investment that we have made in the last 12 months is a company called Depop which is a social marketplace. So think eBay meets Instagram. And when we first invested in that business, they were generating tens of millions of revenue. That business is now generating hundreds of millions of revenue. And most recently, uh, we brought in General Atlantic, which is one of the world's tier one consumer investors uh, to lead a, a 40 million pound investment. And I suppose for context, General Atlantic has invested in other companies like Uber, Airbnb, Slack, which really speaks to the long-term ambition for these types of companies to be valued in the hundreds of millions or, or billions uh, in a short period of time. And um, sort of some of the more established companies you've got in the portfolio, do you want to talk about them? I think it's really important because whilst there are maybe 70 plus companies in the portfolio. We've now got over 20 companies that we've been invested into for over five years. So the core of the portfolio is actually in, in established and more mature companies. So companies like Secret Escapes, when we first invested, when they had a spreadsheet, that, that's all they had, uh, is now the European category leader in discounted luxury products or discounted luxury holidays. Secret Escapes, handpick the hotels and guarantee their members the best rates. Who are you talking to, darling? Uh, no one. Shh, quick, go, go. Join the worst kept secret in luxury travel. For us, that's probably one of the best case studies of a company where we invested a small amount initially and have grown our exposure as that company has hit its milestones. And so now is about 6p in the pound for us. And I think as a, as a manager, for that's, that's really the challenge of keep our exposure small to companies where maybe we have questions or it's early on in their journey and really double down on companies where they've hit their milestones and we're really more confident about the long-term outlook. It's quite risky all of this, um, what can go wrong? So I think we're very open that these are high-risk early stage companies. I think one thing to note is that on a portfolio basis that does change the change the profile somewhat. So across 75 plus companies, there's a range of sectors, stages, and, and geographies. So about 65% of our companies have material revenues overseas or actually have overseas offices. So from a diversification perspective, that's something that we take very seriously. Um, but I think given that we're investing in early stage companies, we expect a portion of those to fail Normally they fail quite early on in the process. The most obvious and common reasons are the, the wrong team to scale the business, changes in the market, or fundamentally the product doesn't do what they expected to do. Uh, but actually on a portfolio basis, we'll expect some to fail, but we expect the big success stories to far outweigh um, the, the, the failures, and that's really what, what drives uh, the performance. But I suppose a more recent example, we invested in a company called Cabby, which aggregated minicab fleets. Uh, the founding team had run their own minicab fleet. Uh, it was a large market, so for us it was pioneering, but also the, the team had strong credentials. But I think at that point, there was a small West Coast uh, startup called Uber uh, that we had really no visibility on. And 
very shortly after investing into Cabby, uh, Uber decided that it was looking to dominate Europe. And so that was a company where actually the potential for it to hit its um, returns expectation wasn't fulfilled. And we looked to sell down our stake at a loss and recycle that money elsewhere. So I think we are cognizant that there are risks, but for us, the really important part is not putting good money after bad. And if those companies look like they're failing, trying to recycle that capital and deploy it elsewhere where we can make our 10, 20, 30x returns. And of course, it's quite big now, isn't it, Titan? In fact, it's extremely big. Um, What effect is that going to have on returns? So Titan is the largest VCT in the market. It's the eighth largest fund in the market. And we typically compare ourselves to other VCs rather than VCTs. Uh, For us, there isn't really, like post this fundraise, we expect Titan to be valued at about a a billion pounds. Um, For us, actually, that's a great thing for us in terms of new deals, but also enabling us to back um, our existing portfolio. So for any money we raise, we expect to deploy 60 to 70% of that into the existing portfolio companies. It's really important that we build meaningful stakes in companies we think are gonna be successful. So actually, it's important that we continue to raise money um, to, to back those winners. And I think when we think about performance, and we discuss this very actively with the board that sits above us as a team and and manages uh, the Titan VCT around, we're solving for medium to long-term returns. And that is the profile in which investors are holding their shares. So it's correct that we raise more money. It's correct that we continue to invest in new companies. And it's correct that we solve for that long, medium to long-term returns. If we were to solve for short-term returns, I think that would change a lot of our um, decisions. But but I think it's also worth noting the the actual opportunity in the UK and Europe in that I think over the last five years uh, in Europe, we've gone from having about 40 companies valued at a billion dollars, kind of technology companies, to now having about 85 in a very short period of time. And the UK is actually the best market across all of Europe by a considerable margin for building these types of technology companies. So actually for us, a big driver is the opportunity in the portfolio and the opportunity for new deals is a, is a really key driver in us looking to, to raise more money um, and, and as part of this fundraise. So where do you get all your deals from? So our, our deal flow comes from a number of, of sources. Our best quality deal flow comes from existing relationships. So this might be from CEOs that we kind of know and, and perhaps it's it's an, another entrepreneur from their network. Um, so Kazoo, which was the second-hand car business uh, that Alex Chesterman is launching, we backed Alex before, so he knew us. So serial entrepreneurs are, are right at the top of our list. Um, we have other companies who invested um, in a business, so bought by many, that was a, a warm relationship that we had nurtured. So network and relationship is really key to us. And it's worth saying that we've been investing in this type of asset for over 10 years. So we've built a strong track record with entrepreneurs and actually our brand is well known in the entrepreneurial world. Uh, And so warm relationships are are a key part, but we also see thousands of businesses each year, most of which actually come to us uh, as inbound opportunities. Are you getting much competition then for those deals? So for the best deals, there is competition. And who is your competition? Is it other venture capital trusts or is it? It's a really good question. For us, our core competitor set are tier one global VCs. Uh, So the likes of Axel and Index who invest in LinkedIn, kind of Amazon and and, and those type of, of of very well-known global um, technology companies. I think the competitor set that we see less are other VCTs in the the way that we have structured the team and our proposition to entrepreneurs and track record is quite different to other VCTs. Last year, we did a data collection exercise across all of our uh, most recent investments and asked them, do you recognize any of these top 10 VCT managers? And I think over 80% of our CEOs said they didn't even recognize them. Uh, So we do do see other VCTs. I think we will see more competition from other VCTs, but actually the track record, the performance, uh, and our offering to entrepreneurs of, of how we look to help them, actually sets us apart in quite a distinct way. You mentioned the number of 
billion pound or billion dollar company suddenly around, are you finding that it's, everything's rather overvalued? There's a lot of deals at the moment where I think if you scrutinise the price, it can be hard to justify. Um, but I would say that we're in a position where we're not in any rush to make new investments. So if we don't think we can make our, our return profile, we're very happy walking away from those deals. So we see thousands of businesses a year will look to make probably 15 new investments a year. So that's under 1% conversion rate from opportunity to investment. So we can be very selective. I think the other nuance is where we are typically investing very early on in a company's life in a, in a company's uh, kind of growth trajectory, it means that even if we are perhaps overpaying at times by 10, 20, 30 percent, and that business is valued at maybe 10 million, if that business is ultimately successful in being worth a billion, that is still an incredible return for us. So the earlier you go, the, the less sensitivity there is potentially to. To, to kind of other market pressures. Obviously the other thing about size which we sort of touched on is that now to get some really good returns as you had in the past, you need some really, really big winners to um, get through the size of the fund. Yes. So. so I would say that historically we have had big winners. Yep. So the likes of Zoopla, which went from very low in value to being valued at over a billion, SwiftKey, which we sold to Microsoft, Magic Pony, which we sold to Twitter. So there is a track record there of backing companies that have subsequently gone to be, be very valuable. Um, but I think for us, the piece about as the fund grows, it makes it even more important that when we're investing in companies that we are taking significant ownership stakes. So for us, we look to drive to a place where we're typically owning maybe 10 to 20 percent of an individual portfolio company and so if that company is successful and is valued at a billion or in the hundreds of millions it means that actually the impact on Titan is, is significant and so for companies like Bought by Many or Depop if they are successful in doing what they are looking to do and at the moment they're very much on track these companies can still deliver both regular uh, regular dividends to Titan, but in those situations where we have very, very, very large uh, exits, then we'd also look to be in a position to pay special dividends, albeit they're very difficult to, to predict both in terms of size and timing. You've talked about sort of the large, the, the high profile exits. Have you had any recent exits over the last year? So we uh, first invested in a business called Graze, which sold healthy snack boxes. Um, and then we've tracked that as a, as a significant investor in that business, um, have been part of the journey as the business has become a, a category leader in terms of UK and kind of subscription healthy snacks. And then as that business then launched in the US, and then we were fortunate enough to sell that business uh, to Unilever earlier this year. Uh, looking back slightly further, we were also an investor in a business called Tails, which was a subscription dog food company very successful um, in its specific field, which we then sold to Nestle. And so I think whilst there's been some, some recent exits and that's against our, our longer term backdrop of selling companies to some of the largest technology companies globally, um, like we have a strong track record. I think for us, it's really important that we continue to drive exits going forward and that that's where the liquidity comes from in the fund and that's where we look to pay dividends from. And so for us, a really big portfolio strategy that we're driving is what we refer to as raise and return in that that's where we think we can have one of the most meaningful impacts on the fund is how do we help our portfolio companies raise more capital as well as how do we facilitate those exit conversations and being proactive about driving those. Stepping back slightly, how involved do you get in these companies? Very, I think is probably the short answer. Uh, making the investments is probably the easier part of the process. I think what, what actually really drives performance is building stakes in the most uh, successful companies, as well as trying to help those companies avoid common pitfalls and risks that maybe other companies have been caught into, which means that for entrepreneurs, we'd hope that if they take our money, we can actually help them accelerate their growth trajectory. Uh, so for us, it's a, it's a material commitment. So we have an office in New York, which is there purely to help our European companies think about how to launch in the US. We also have a group of what we refer to as operating venture partners. And so these are best in class, 
operators, for want of another word. And so we've got people in there like Howard Bell, who was ex-head of product for PayPal. We have um, another venture partner called John Hamm, who's a CEO coach, who's also a CEO coach to many of the senior leadership at Netflix and LinkedIn. So these really are the, the best, the, the best um, and, and leaders in their field. And we look to, to actually bring those individuals uh, and, and actually surround our portfolio and, and our CEOs with these types of individuals with the intention that it will help our companies grow faster as well as also allow them to mitigate other risks. So Will, if um, someone's looking to put some money into VCTs this year, um, why should they invest with you? So Titan is the largest VCT in the market. We have a strong track record of backing some of the most successful tech companies in Europe. We have very strong underlying health within the portfolio. So I think in aggregate, the portfolio revenue grew about 45% last year, which is pretty incredible. And so the fund is also managed by an experienced team, many of which have been investing from Titan over the last 10 years. And I think off the back of the exciting opportunities for new investments in the broader market as well as in the portfolio, plus the performance, plus the team, uh, and the opportunity we see in the next five plus years, um, we're very excited to be raising more capital as part of this year's fundraise. And Will Gibbs of Octopus Titan um, VCT, thank you very much. Thanks, Alex.